Please rise in preparation for worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord our God, who made heaven and earth. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue to worship God by singing song number one, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. The scripture reading this afternoon is found in the second epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, the fifth chapter. The second epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Before we go to the scripture portion for today's sermon, let us give our undivided attention to the law of God as it is found in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 6 Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 6 I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage thou shalt have none other gods before me thou shalt not make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them, that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. 
keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest, as well as thou. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out of thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, neither shalt thou commit adultery, neither shalt thou steal, neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor, Neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife. Neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. Reading further, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. The entire chapter. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now, he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is of Isga, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we command not ourselves again unto you, 
but give you occasion to the glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraints us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All the things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. At this time, let us join our hearts in prayer together. Almighty, merciful, eternal, most holy and righteous and loving Father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Today, we approach thy throne of grace in this outside setting. But Lord, we remember who thou art as the creator, the one who made all things out of nothing in the space of six days, in the power of the word of God and all very good as we also come unto thee on this Sabbath day, remembering the risen Savior from the dead, victoriously conquering death and securing the eternal heaven for sinners. Lord, we are so grateful for this gospel message in Jesus Christ. We are not worthy of being called of thy children in and of ourselves as we come here, but we come boldly calling upon this most precious name, Jesus Christ, 
the Savior of the world. We thank you, Lord, for the gospel that we heard in time. Thou hast chosen thine own people from eternity, but in time, the gospel has been preached unto us, and God is near as the word of God is preached unto us. Father, we confess our sins. Also, the sins that we committed in the past, the sins that we are committing today already, this day, and also the sins that we might commit in the future. Wash us thoroughly by the blood of Jesus Christ that we may worship Thee in spirit and in truth. Father, we also pray for Thy church, specifically remember Gospel Presbyterian Church in Persephone. Thou knowest all those who are part of this covenant family, though they might be coming from different hometowns in Korea or different backgrounds even in America. Lord, we ask Thee to unify us all together across the generational gap, across the age gap or language gap or potentially the socioeconomic differences. We pray, O oh Lord, that we may be united in Jesus Christ under one great shepherd, Jesus Christ. We pray for the senior pastor, Reverend Unsu Che, and his elders and deacons working together with him to build thy church up. We pray that thy church would continually to be preserved in this sinful generation. Let thy church be the ark of Noah so that so many people who come and seek the Lord in the house of worship would be preserved from sins, from degeneration and corruption and eternal destruction. Lord, help us as we worship today. We would rightly worship Thee as the children of God. Though we are sinners, we ask for Thy Holy Spirit boldly at this time. Remember the young ones here, the growing generation, the future of our church. We pray that these little ones may come to the personal knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who never changes. The same yesterday, today, and forever. We pray all these things in pardon of every sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Continuing with our sermon from last week. First, um, first uh, let us sing to God's praise. Praise number 15, Jesus, the very thought of thee. And the offering will be uplifted. Jesus, the very thought of thee, with sweetness fills the breast, but sweeter far thy face to see, and in thy presence rest. O hope of every contrite heart, O joy of all the meek, to those who fall, how kind thou art, how good to those who seek. Jesus, our only joy be thou, as thou our prize will be. Jesus, be thou our glory now and through eternity.
After a sermon, we will sing Amazing Grace, song number 64, Amazing Grace. Let us turn to our sermon text today, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Continuing with our sermon from last week, we will look at man the image bearer of God. And last week, we look at the first two points regarding how God created human beings. Children, you would remember on which day God especially created man and woman. It was which day? Yes, the sixth day. And when God created man, He created them after His own image. Everything was perfect. It was nothing like our days. When God created man, they were in perfect condition in their knowledge, in their righteousness, in their holiness, in their image. But soon after the creation, Adam, our first father, fell greatly against God by sinning, by disobeying God. And the image found in man has been since tainted so much. And we find ourselves in such a great disarray this past week. You all know what took place in Miami Beach in Florida. The nice ocean beach tower collapsed in midnight. Soon after midnight, the building just collapsed, including all those people in that building. And when you look at the rumbles and debris after the collapse, what do you think about it? What do you make of it? 41 years ago, I mean 40 years ago, the building was just built up very nicely in perfect beach place. And many people came there to celebrate the brand new building in Surfside, Florida, Miami. And what happened now? It's just utterly destroyed within just a second and it's like that God made man perfectly after his image but by sinning man found themselves in such disarray and they could not overcome that Result of sin themselves. Dear congregation, do you really want to recover the image of God in you? We talked about the perfect mental ability of man when he was just created. But now, the image of God is broken, so broken that 
by nature, we are born as haters of our neighbors and haters of God. We are so broken that we don't know how to love other people. We are so broken that we don't anymore seek God. All we do is sinning. Do you really want to know how to go back to the original condition as image bearer of God? Do you want to know what one thing that you must know more than any other increasing knowledge of this world? That is how we can be restored to God's image. The restoration of the image of God is also called regeneration. It's made up of two words, re, the, the prefix, and generation, the second part of the word. It's like to renew and it's to reproduce from something that, that is utterly broken, almost useless. Regeneration is restoration of something that had been originally generated but had ceased to exist or only exist in a life, lifeless state. The image of God can be reestablished and it can come to life again through the grace of God and power of God. What does the text today say to us? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. As if it's brought to a new life, new condition. Let us look at three important details of this restoration of our Savior. First, Jesus Christ came into the world as light and Savior of many sinners. He was in the Word, but the Word knew Him not. He came unto His own, but His own received Him not. Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, is the image of the invisible God, Colossians 1.15. He is the express image of His person, Hebrews 1.3. As much as our first parents had to be created by God, we need to be restored now by this eternal Son of God, the second Adam. Children, if I ask you today two most important people in the Bible, who would you choose? One in the Old Testament and the other in the New Testament. Just two people. Who would you choose? Joel Lee, go ahead. Any idea? God and Jesus, it's your answer. Thank you. I am looking for somebody more like us. Somebody who has same body features. Two eyes, one nose, one mouth, two hands, two legs one head, and I'm looking for two people. The most important people. And these are representations. 
of a lot more people. Okay, Doha, Lee, go ahead. David and Paul, very good. But those are not what I'm looking for. Yuha Lee. Adam and Jesus? Yes. Adam is the first man God created who represents all fallen human beings. But Jesus Christ represents all those who are born again in him through the Holy Spirit. These are most important people in the Bible. Second, Jesus Christ came into the world also as a human being. Jesus Christ did not come as an angel to save sinners, nor did he come to save as an animal. Jesus Christ came as a man like you and me. He has the same bodily features. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Hebrews 2.17 He lived on earth like us. He ate like us. He slept like us. He bled like us. He went through all the temptations, all the sufferings like us, or even more. No one could be sad to have deeper sufferings than Jesus went through. He knew what it is like to lose our loved ones through death. Jesus wept when Lazarus died. He knew what it was like to be poor in this world. The foxes has holes. But Jesus didn't have a place to lay his head. We knew, he knew what it was like to be despised and rejected by fellow men. He even knew what it is like to feel abandoned by God the Father. He said on the cross, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But because he was so much like us, he could become our very Savior. Third, Jesus Christ came anointed in threefold offices, namely prophet, priest, and king. Through his prophetic role, we obtain the true knowledge of God. Jesus teaches us all the knowledge of God, and we begin to confess his name before others. Dear congregation, faith is more than knowledge, correct? But, you cannot have faith without knowing God and knowing things of Jesus Christ. Your faith is built on something that you know of. Jesus came to teach us the heavenly knowledge. Then through his priestly office, Jesus sacrificed his body for our sins and we begin to sacrifice ourselves unto God as a living sacrifice. Through his kingly office, we become subject to his rule and he becomes our protector, our king, and he rules us in our home, in our church, everywhere. He is the king. He is worthy of our praise 24-7. Whenever we gather here as a church, He is worthy of our praise. He is the king.
all of his divine offices as eternal priest, prophet, and king, we are also to follow Jesus Christ. At home, we offer unto God through our prayers. Not only in the church, we pray unto God as little priests. And we, at home again, teach children the heavenly knowledge from the Bible as little prophets. And we also rule as little kings at home. We fight against sin. Following the victorious Jesus Christ who conquered death on the cross. He suffered. He was rejected for us. His face was so damaged more than any man for the sinners. Christ came to restore the image of God in us. Do you see what an amazing restoration is possible to this totally ruined and destroyed image of God in us? This is only possible through the crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. He becomes the only source of the most amazing, breathtaking restoration, recreation, regeneration of sinners by the grace of God. What a joyful and exciting work this must be to our Savior. Children, when Jesus sees you from heaven, how happy He would be. You are little ones. And how happy He would be because from all these days you could come to Jesus Christ. You don't have to waste your whole entire life to come to Jesus Christ at the end of the life. Like the thief who only had just few moments before his death to know and to love and to praise Jesus. You could do that right from now, from here. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You don't have to wait until the last moment of your life to be renewed creature, renewed man in God. In conclusion, there are two different kinds of people in our days. One group of people think that they are high and noble being apart from God. They regard themselves as high as God against Him. They think as if they were God. Because they are little gods to themselves. They don't need God. They don't want God. Thinking they can do anything and everything they want to do. Arrogantly. Another people are those who do not think that they are with their invaluable souls. Never dying souls. They don't think that way. They live life that is little different from that of those animals and beasts that do not have souls. They rather underestimate the soul in them and live carelessly. They don't care about the needs of the soul. Both of these views are so wrong. You and I are made of dust, but we are not only dust because God Breathed in us the life, the image of God.
You and I are fallen, but Christ came to save our, save sinners, to renew our souls and our images after God. Therefore, the only comfort of our life and death is to be restored before it is too late. When it is today, when it is called today, we have the chance to be renewed and regenerated and restored by the Holy Spirit to the image of Jesus Christ. Dear congregation, you are called to shine forth in this spiritually darkened, sinful world. Not in the image of the fallen Adam, but in the image of Jesus Christ. As the moon cannot shine forth on its own without the sun, you should always look to God in Christ so that you may shine in this world as the restored image of God. Continue to trust in Him. It is true that you are still incomplete. I know. We all know that. Probably we will never be complete and perfect until the last day of our life. There is indwelling sin within us. It is still painful to see that evidence of sin. Every day, if, if not every moment. However, you have been sanctified by the precious blood of Christ. Whenever you have one look at yourself, look to Christ ten times or even more. One day, you will see God face to face. His image will be perfectly restored in you and in us. And we can say, we shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Psalm 17, 15. Amen. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. O oh, gracious Holy Spirit, blow upon us on this beautiful day that we may be renewed inside and outside like Jesus Christ, the one who was despised and rejected, who suffered the most and died upon the cross, and rose again from the dead. There is no hope outside Jesus Christ. It's all about sin. It's all about grim and dark realities about sin. But there is only true hope in Jesus Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are gone. All things have become new. Grant us this new life that is only found in Jesus Christ. Let us begin all over again as the true, new, restored image bearers of God. Help us, Father, every day. Renew us. Renew our will that we may want to follow Thee. Renew our emotions that we may send things that we didn't sense before in God as the children of God. Give us the confidence that no matter what happens, nothing will separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Renew our bodies, Lord. We may die 
with this feeble and temporary tabernacle, which are our bodies. But we know that we will be regenerated and even we will be given new body on that day in Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank thee for everything. We thank thee for the gospel in Jesus Christ. Help us today to be renewed as if we were never renewed since the ages of Adam and Eve. Be with us in our fellowship afterward. Forgive our many sins. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We will sing to God's praise song number 64, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Doxologies, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Receive the blessing of the Lord and go in peace. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.